This is about political warfare and information warfare, full stop. And all of this chatter that many have, have um, bought into that this is about culture wars or it's about vaccines. No, it's not. It's about power and money. You know, it's about Spotify's market cap dropping. So fascinating point is that the major owner of Spotify, the top owner of Spotify is also the top owner of Moderna. Yes. Okay. So um, this, we, we have to kind of get out of the frame of reference that we're being, that's being pitched to us, that this is about culture wars. Because it's about way more than culture wars. It's about power and money. And culture wars is a nice, easy way to divide us against ourselves. Right. Boom shakalaka, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters around the world. It is your boy, Chris Shul, a.k.a. the Esoteric Noetic, a.k.a. the Chocolate Nubian So Brother from Ghana, West Africa. He in Melbourne. Well, I'm currently in the Gulf Coast, but don't worry. I'll be black. Well, of course I'm black, but uh, I will be back at some point in Melbourne. Grew up in the Wisdomatic Truth Bombs, as I do. Uh, be sure to like the video, subscribe, click on the bell, tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your momos, drop us those comments. Be sure to check, out, check us out on the Patreon right here. Uh, also, I got a little treat. For those that decide to uh, check out the Patreon, it's only for as little as $1 a month. You can gain access to uh, the footage, extra bonus footage from my podcast and so forth. Uh, I got a new book out. It is called, you ready for it? Vegan Prince warrior king where i speak about the plight of animals in this world but also striving to be a warrior for truth for all of the beings of this planet striving to be the best that you can be in all things if you guys want to follow us on the patreon uh i will get you a copy of my book for free for free <laughs> but only for the next um only for the next month if you ask me, I will, uh, I will send it to you. It will be available most likely next month, though, this new book that I have. Uh, it'll be, well, I'll work out the details, but I'm very, very happy to announce that it is ready. And uh, you guys, well, hopefully you will gain an insight into the, uh, the wisdomatic truth bombs of the chocolate newbie and soul brother. <laughs> All right. Kisses, hugs, and belly rubs, by the way, for V-Day, V for love, V for vendetta, V for victory. Victory is at hand. The truth is getting out there. The truth is out there. The truth is coming out. And more and more people are waking up every single day. Let's get it. All right. First order of business, I want to talk about what's going on with my buddy Elon Musk. Elon Musk is a cool dude. I mean, he has his hands in a lot of cool things, cool technologies, uh, space traveling and all that kind of stuff. And the Neuralink. Now, I, for one, am not one of these momos that says, oh, technology is bad. You can't have technology, mate. Look, mate, it's going to destroy the world. Well, technology has the potential to do either good or bad. Now, specifically in regards to the Neuralink device, now, uh, I think this has a lot of applications. People that perhaps have some kind of a brain issue and not able to use their arms or legs, I think the applications are fantastic. The problem, though, is when technologies are given to governments and they start forcing this stuff on people like we've seen with uh, the juice and so forth. And also the other problem is when people start creating these technologies through uh, horrible practices like animal testing. Now recently I found out that reportedly 15 of the 23 monkeys uh, that had uh, this Neuralink implant Im embedded within them have um, reportedly died. I'm not down with that. First of all, I don't think we should be testing on animals, you know? People that want to make this argument that it's for the greater good, well, look, you can use that to justify anything. You are moving into the darkest realms of moral philosophy if you want to use that argument. Anyone that wants to default to that kind of argument is clearly not worthy of being, uh, well, of being a moral person, in my opinion. Come on, you know what you're doing. Come on, let's not be testing on animals here. Elon, what are you doing, son? All right. In other news, now for those of you that have been paying attention to the journeys of the chocolate Nubian, you must uh, be aware that I've been trying to leave the country. In fact, I could have leave, left the country. In fact, I could leave the country right now. I definitely have the ability to. I have an exemption. However, uh, it turns out that it is more complicated. There are countries that have been putting restrictions on people coming into the country from Australia, like Belgium, um, like Ghana, um, my hometown. 
Shame on the Ghanaians. They won't allow people into the country unless, of course, they take in the juice, right? And they say they're just following the science. But what's interesting is the science has always been changing. And the, the people that are saying that they're following the science have been saying that anyone that spouts information that is not in line with the science, well, they, they should be punished. Not only should they be censored, but they should be punished through the law, in prison, and so forth. And what's interesting is we just found out recently that the science has changed. And those people that were advocating for violence on people spreading misinformation they were actually wrong. They've gotten the science wrong in many instances in regards to the efficacy of lockdowns, the efficacy of mass, the efficacy of the boom shakalaka. And these people are the same people that are still advocating for people to be punished for spreading misinformation when they are the ones that are spreading misinformation. If you ask me, these are the people that were advocating for, for people spreading misinformation to be locked up. These people should be fined and imprisoned because essentially they're advocating for violence. They're advocating for taking away the rights of people, freedom of speech. And anyway, I digress. I think uh, it's incumbent upon us to have the ability to move freely, freedom of movement. And when governments start saying whether or not we can enter their country and so forth, um, yeah, we're moving into some very uh, tricky waters. Oh! So, in regards to that whole thing, Australia has come out to announce that whereas February 17th was just a few days ago, they were going to allow the unjab now to, to leave the country, right? Now they're saying, well, because the situation, the science has been changing, we're, now going to, we're not going to allow you guys to leave the country. We're extending that date to April, April 17th. So, whereas the jab can leave the country of Australia, the unjab cannot. Now, of course, I could leave. But I'm staying here because I want to. I want to fight the good fight. <laughs> uh, no, I'm staying here because one. I'm coming to some difficulties, and I, I honestly don't see the point right now. After giving this more thought, just based off of changing circumstances, moving to a country when it is, but it is likely that they may be bringing about restrictions, and also just the changing nature of the financial climate right now. Um, there've been some changes to my my circumstances, and it doesn't seem viable. Uh, for me to leave and uh, have to return because I can't do the kind of work that I want to do and sustain, sustain myself. So I am going to be in Australia, mate, for at least at least now. And uh, it's, at some point, I'll be back in Melbourne, just to update you. But in regards to our situation as Australians here, um, we are not going to be able to leave this country unless, of course, we get experimental gene therapy, um, at least until April the 17th. And if you follow what the government's been doing, changing requirements... Uh, chances are they may change that again. So personally, I think if you want to do something, you've got to do it. There are options always available to you. You can apply for an exemption. And if that is not possible, well, I think you should do it anyway. When you have a legal government, um, tyrants that are telling you that you can't do things that you have a right to do because no one can take away your freedoms, well, you, 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 you're confronted with an option. You can either obey their tyrannical dictates or you can defend yourself. You can do those things and respond with a necessary amount of force in order to thwart their unjust mandates, which is what we've always had to do. Tyranny and evil has never been confronted by acquiescing to it, but by standing against it. There are a lot of the momos, a lot of the hippies out there that make this argument. And look, they have a right to that. Oh, look, I'm just going to, I'm just going to like go ahead with this like because I, I got to live my life. And you have every right to, but just be mindful of the fact that things are... Typically, never going to change unless, of course, you confront this. And it's incumbent upon us, I believe, in order to stand against tyranny. At least that's what I do, because I'm a warrior king. Some other things I wanted to speak about are, what's going on with Joe Rogan right now? That ain't cool. Regardless of what you think about Joe Rogan, this guy is a powerhouse. He is the biggest media personality that we have right now against, uh, well, well, definitely for freedom of speech. And he's been attacked by the media relentlessly. And essentially, their attacks are ridiculous. They're telling him, they're saying that he's been spreading misinformation, right? When they're the ones that have been spreading misinformation, right? Objectively. The only thing is, um, granted, uh, it wasn't called misinformation six months ago. It is called misinformation now. <laughs> but they're saying that he's no longer, he should no longer be able to spread these dangerous views, you know? That they believe in freedom of speech, a lot of them say, but they don't believe in freedom of speech when it concerns health. When the reality is freedom of speech is not subject to any restrictions, provided you are not inciting violence, you have the right to speak your mind. Uh, and Joe Rogan recently came out to announce that 
essentially, the mainstream media should do a better job that he's just having conversations. You know, he, he wants to know the truth. He, he likes asking difficult questions and getting different perspectives. It's like the Chris Hill Journey podcast, yo. You should check that out. I like to ask the difficult questions. Also, uh, have a laugh. But fundamentally, that these, uh, the, these media stations should do a better job of trying to find the truth, and perhaps more people would tune into them. I mean, at the moment, Joe Rogan has millions. I, I've heard estimates of 11 million subscribers you know, to every podcast. Uh, however, the mainstream media is getting maybe less than 500,000. And so it's understandable that they're getting Nancy Pansy about the fact that Joe Rogan is spreading this information and uh, is influencing so many people. It would seem right now that the vast majority of people are not in down with the agenda. I ran, I run into people all the time, you know, um, and they just randomly just tell me, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know it's a, I know it's a fast. I'm not down with what's going on. And it, turn, it turns out that where is the narrative is that, look, everyone is doing the right thing. Well, everyone's been coerced to do it. That's why they're doing it. The vast majority of people are aware of what's going on, and there are more and more people waking up every day. And Joe Rogan is leading the way. He is, uh, he is the, the cavalry right now against the tyranny. Ooh, now, there is some other juicy stuff I wanted to talk about, um, but I can't talk about this because this is going to YouTube. But it's very interesting to find out that for the first time in history, I'll just say this, uh, we've had more heterosexuals that um, have uh, had AIDS than, um, at least this is what I've, I've heard reported, than homosexuals. Interesting that. Of course, it's not in relation to anything that's going on right now. Uh, also, <laughs> what's going on with my, my man Trudeau is laughable. Trudeau has openly threatened the protesters, the convoys, about their protests because this has created a lot of problems. And he's getting a lot of of heat in Parliament. It seems like he's probably one of the most hated people in the world right now. Um, he's essentially, rather than taking a step back and saying, all right, I give you guys back your freedom, um, even though I ne had never had any right to take it away from you in the first place. Um, rather than doing that, he's decided to fine people about $100,000, reportedly, uh, unless, of course, they stop protesting against the violation of their rights. So where is we have all these people in Canada that are saying, I don't like this idea that you're taking away my ability to free, freely move in this country and telling me what I can do within my business, even though I'm not directly harming anyone. Um, I don't like that. And I'm protesting against that. And of course, Trudeau on one hand is saying, uh, you're racist and you're sexist and you're advocating for hate and we need to come together. Everyone else has done this thing. 90% of Americans that have done the right thing. His arguments are so ridiculous. And what I love about this guy, I mean, check this out. It's time to go home. It's time to bring your kids home from this protest. It is now an illegal protest and the consequences on them and on their families uh, will be significant if they choose to continue with this illegal activity. He sounds so beautiful in the things that he says, right? He speaks about love and working together, but ultimately what he's effectively saying is he's threatening people and he's advocating for violence. Of course, the Momos don't see it that way because their left brain has somehow been you know, just shut down. And they just hear and read into the body language. They hear the beautiful tones and they think, oh, this is such a beautiful man. Such a good looking guy. He's a beautiful man. I like him. He must be saying good stuff. But ultimately, he is advocating for violence. And so many people aren't calling this what it is, like the mainstream media, right? Um, personally, I think Trudeau should be locked up because he has essentially been citing violence. He's been abusing his power, and he never had any power, but for that matter. I mean, granted, people think he's somehow powerful almighty, because he's a, you know, some kind of ruler of Canada, but um, no one gave this guy the right to tell me that I can't leave my home. I mean, maybe you guys can send it to it, but I sure as hell didn't. So I think Trudeau needs to get his act into gear, stop being a Momo, stop being a pansy, and just uh, resign. And let the Canadian people have their freedoms, have, finally have the right to decide how they live their lives. Finally, here's another Momo, another royalty. It's like, it's funny, these presidents, these royalties somehow think they have a right to tell us what to do. Ah, oh, the divine right of kings, hey? <laughs> nah, mate, you don't rule me. You don't even rule yourself. So here we got Harry Potter. I'm oh, sorry, I mean, <laughs> um, Prince Harry. Harry Potter, Harry, <laughs> Prince Harry that is saying that um, he expects everyone to get a test for HIV. Hmm, right? <laughs> and it, it's an interesting point. Um, so the Duke of Sussex has told how he feels 
a responsibility to continue his mom's unfinished work in raising awareness around HIV. He took part in a 30-minute video, video with former rugby star and good friend Gareth Thomas as part of a national HIV testing week. He said, every single one of us has a duty or at least an opportunity to get tested ourselves or to make it easier for everybody else to get tested, and then it just becomes a regular thing like anything else, which is fair enough, in fairness. I think, you know, there are definitely a lot of diseases floating out there, and it brings up an interesting question like, um, well, what is the, the social, what is the social uh, obligation? What should be the social obligation? The reality is people shouldn't have to get tested if they don't want to. I mean, just because you are likely to be a walking spreader, just because you are likely to do something or to do something that is negative, doesn't mean that you should have to get tested. It's this game we're playing at the moment where we're trying to impose things on people because we see them as being a risk. Yes, we're a risk. Everyone is a risk, regardless of whether or not you've been tested or have not been tested. I mean, one of the things we found is that sometimes just getting tested right doesn't mean that you're safe. <laughs> um, I think it's our own personal responsibility to decide what risks we want to take, whether or not we want to get tested. Now, granted, I think it's incumbent upon us to make people aware of, the, uh, of, our, of our situation, but we don't have to. See, the problem I'm having right now is people have moved in this world where they think you have to disclose information. You have to tell them about your boom shock or lack of status. You have to tell them all bits about, all things about your private life. I don't have to do check. Now, if you don't want to hang out with me because of that, that's your right. But for you to impose restrictions on me because I don't divulge certain information, now you're being a momo. The reality is exposing yourself in this world is going to manifest itself as problems. People Businesses, governments will restrict your, your, your ability to move around. They will impose fines on you. They will take your information and they will sell it to organizations without your consent. This is the reality of the situation. So we all have to decide what risks we want to take and try to be as transparent as we think it is necessary. Um, but I, for one, am sure as hell not going to be um, acquiescing to any mandates just because... Mr. Harry Potter, I mean Prince Harry, says that I should. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Ladies and gentlemen, remember that we are living in a world where where is the science may be changing. The truth does not. The truth is quantifiable. It is discernible. And it is incumbent upon us to strive to acquire it. Strive to be the best that we can be in all things. To realize that there are three things that cannot remain hidden for long. The sun, the moon, and the wisdomatic truth bombs of the chocolate Nubian soul brother. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, click on the bell, tell your friends, tell your mom, drop us some comments, drop us some, cri some cryptocurrencies, or better yet, give us a follow on Patreon. Until next time, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for being the amazing people that you are. Every single one of you, in all seriousness, I know you're doing your bit in the, every way that you can, and keep doing that. We got some amazing stuff going on in Canberra right now. I might be, I might be heading down there, ladies and gentlemen. Some amazing stuff, obviously, that's going on in Canada. Keep fighting the good fight. Remember that despite what the, the cynics tell you, your efforts are felt. Everything that we do in this world manifests itself throughout the universe towards infinity. It has a tangible, palpable effect on changing the status quo. It may not be felt tomorrow, but it will be felt. And your children will thank you for it. And this is how we win, the, the world, we win this battle. Not through, not through massive massive steps but little steps every single day every single thing that you do all the works of people the comments that people share the conversations people have to the legal cases that are fought to not acquiescing to to tyranny this all paves the way in changing the narrative remember that until next time surya namaskar namaste kisses hugs and belly rubs for v-day What is liberty? What the? He says you can't build muscle on a vegan diet. What's it like being a, a hottie in the vegan community? <laughs> there are no political solutions, only technological ones. The economics of the system don't allow multiple competing systems to survive. Engineering, technology, these arts of humanity, they are magic.